For some annotation tasks, having only one file available on screen just isn't enough. Luckily, you can annotate multiple files on the same screen at once using slots. This is especially useful for medical use cases like mammography hanging protocols, but can be used for any scenario where multiple files and file types are required on screen at once. Let's say you require PDF instructions on an item level rather than a dataset level. Slots enable you to register a PDF file with additional information about the item, so the image-specific instructions are always visible to an annotator while they are annotating. For instance, when loading an ultrasound image in the right slot and a healthcare record as a PDF in the left slot. Or to just render different zoom levels of the same image on the screen at once. Or rendering satellite imagery in one slot and the corresponding ground imagery in the other. So you can see slots can be used in many different ways to suit your specific use case best. But let's have a look how to actually upload data into specific slots using the REST API. We actually already have a full video on uploading and registering data to v7, so I won't go too much into detail here. But it's pretty much exactly the same, just we have to modify a tiny bit of the payload that we are sending. Nevertheless, let's look at the code. We'll again start with the imports, and since we are using the REST API, the only library that we really need is the requests library. I'm also importing my API key here, which I've stored in a separate file, so you don't see what my API key actually is. Okay, now that we have the imports out of the way, Let's look at step zero, right? Which images do we actually want to upload? In this example here, I have an extra directory that is called breast, where I have two DICOM images, one for the left breast and one for the right breast. So after getting those two images, I'll store them in a little dictionary and I'll separate them into a key and a value for the item name and for the respective path of that specific item. So when running the cell, we can see again what I just mentioned, the item name itself as the key and the path to that item as the value. This is really handy to then just loop over the individual items that we then, which we need to do to actually upload the data, right? We will have to upload every single item separately. But if that doesn't make sense yet, we'll look at it in a second. So let's go to the actual step one here, right? The first step is will be to actually register the data. Again, I'm going to refer to the full video on, on more details, but we have to register each single file to v7 that v7 knows how many files are, we are going to upload and what they are called. So to do that, we'll specify the URL, providing our Slugified team name, and the dataset slug will be used in a second. Okay, so for the whole payload of our uh, message that we are sending, we are going to have the same headers as always, and for the payload, this is the part that we have to tweak a bit from the payload that we used in the full registry or upload video. Since this time we are actually working with slots, we have to provide all the different items in the specific slots, right? We have a list of all items. In this case, we are, we'll be having one item, one breast item that has two images inside of it, right? Two slots for those images. So here inside of this list of this comprehension for all items, I will again be iterating over the actual images that are going to be stored in the specific slots, right? So I'm, I here I'm going to add a list of all slot items for one particular global item, okay? And again, the values that we provide to, for this message are almost the same as, again, in the previous, in the full length video. We'll provide the file name of the actual file that we'll be uploading. In this case, I'll be having a breast left and a breast right. So let's we, uh, we'll start with uh, breast right. And then I'm going to provide the slot name. And the slot name in this case will just be zero for the first slot. And for the second item, the breast left, the slot name will be one, right? That's, that's how we associate individual, in, individual images to the specific slots of the whole item. Okay, I hope that wasn't too confusing. But as mentioned, it's just a tiny list list comprehension iterating over the individual items that you want to assign to one slot. After we have built this payload, we can just send our request and we'll receive an answer where we have a list of all the items that we want to upload 
Again, items in this, in this context is going to be one item, namely, a, namely an item called breast. But this one item will have multiple slots. It will have multiple actual files, actual images in the slots. And each individual slot will have a upload ID. Okay, so that means that we'll have to upload each individual image to V7. So let me quickly just extract those two upload IDs for the two individual images. And I'm going to store them in another dictionary where the key is again the upload ID and the value is going to be the path to the actual item that we want to upload. So that's not going to be necessary. And then we actually get to this upload loop that iterates over all the individual items. Now this part is exactly the same as in the full upload and registry video. So I will again just really rush through this. this. The first step that we need to do in this loop or the second step in this whole upload process is to actually sign our image. And when signing this image, we'll get a response that, that, that includes the upload URL to this specific image. From there on, it's really simple. We'll just need to read in the data, read in the one specific image, and then upload the image to the to the um, provided specific upload URL for this one image. Once that is done, we can confirm the upload and we actually need to confirm the upload um, to providing again, this one URL. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me just run the cell and we'll see that we will have two successful responses printed out right for the upload of the file and for the confirmation. And once that is done, I'll get back to you and show you that the files are actually uploaded to the data set. Okay, the items have successfully uploaded. So let me quickly open the UI and then we'll see there are no items in here. But when I refresh the UI, we can see that I now have one item here that is called breast. And if I open this item, we can see that I have two slots with two separate images. One for the right breast and one for the left breast. That way I can compare them better when doing my annotations. Now, for example, I could go ahead and just draw random bounding boxes of class demo. Two on the right breast, let's say, and one on the left breast. And that's done. But again, those two files that you want to upload into two slots don't have to be of the same type. One could be a video, for example, and the other a PF or a normal PNG. To show that that actually works, I have a second directory prepared with an image and a video, right? I have an image of a floor plan and a video of a person going through the apartment, right? And I'll just skip through this code because the code is exactly the same. I will get my IDs, right? Again, corresponding to each item itself. And then I will run this sign, upload and confirm loop. Now, since this is done, we can go ahead and just open the UI and we can see that I again have a new item right here, which is called room. And if I open this item, we can see that I again have two slots, one for the PDF for the floor plan or one PNG for the floor plan and one item for the video of the room. I can now iterate over every frame and when wanting to label something based on the room we are in, for example, I can make better decisions based on that because I have the floor plan. I know we are currently in the living room and for example, when going to the balcony, um, I would know that this balcony is, is directly attached to the living room or when I would be going to one of the bedrooms, I would know that bedroom that I am in is bedroom A, B, C or however they will be labeled. So it's just a really nice view, a really nice guidance assistance for the annotators to have such a, a reference point, for example. But since we have two images in one item, how do we actually access the annotations that we do on the individual images, right? On the individual slots? That's a very good question. So let's simply go ahead and export our breast example where I have done some annotations and look at the annotation file, our Darwin JSON annotation file. So to do that, we'll just select this one file, go to export data, create a new export. Let's call this one breast as well. Let's take the selected file, 
and just export the item. And once it's done generating the export, we can just go ahead and download our file. We again have a full video on the Darwin JSON file format where we go into detail in how it is structured. But to go to the point of dealing with the slots, let's just look at the individual exports, right? So we here have the item field and the item field lists, lists all the metadata of the individual items that we have. In this case, we, are, we only have one item, the breast item. And this one item, again, right here, breast, has multiple slots. And we can here see a list of all the different slots, right? We have here slot zero, which was our left slot, which was the right breast. And we here have some metadata like the width and height. Um, this is the second slot, right? Slot one, again, metadata. And now if we go down to the actual annotations, we have a similar thing. We have a list of all the different annotations of this one item, right? And for example, here we have one bounding box, right? Well, how do we know to which of the two images this bounding box corresponds? Well, for this specific annotation, we have the slot name. So we know that this specific bounding box corresponds to slot zero, the left image, so the image of the right breast. Again, the same for this bounding box. It's, a, it's the second bounding box of the left image that we had. And our third bounding box right here belongs to slot number one, the right image. In this example, we uploaded data into two slots, but you can add as many slots as you like. For more details, please have a look at the documentation. The only option to upload data into slots is via the REST API. But with this video and the documentation, you are equipped with all the details you need. Cool, that was it. Slots are a powerful tool to annotate multiple files on the same screen. Or always have a guidance file next to the actual item that is to be annotated. You now know how to upload your data into a slots layout. And you know how to work with the exported annotation that includes multiple slots. I hope this video helped you with getting started with V7.